Hey folks, welcome to the start of unit eight. We are working on hypothesis tests now for means. So last section we were working with proportions. This section we're working with means. We're going to start off by stating our hypotheses, defining our parameters, and we're even going to throw in checking conditions since we have done this a little bit before. All right, so stating hypothesis and defining the parameter. So we're talking about the mean weight of high school football players in 2010 was 185 pounds. We believe the mean has increased. So the parameter we're talking about is mean. So we're going to define what that mean is. In this case, it is the true mean weight of high school football players. All right, so we want to be specific here if we can. All right. Next, we state both of our hypotheses. So we're going to have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, just like before, or a ho and a ha. For the null hypothesis, it's always going to be that this mean is equal to some value. In this case, we were told that in 2010, it was 185. So it was 185. Now we want to know has it increased? So increased means greater than. So is it now greater than 185? So that's what we're doing for that guy. All right, next example over here. The mean number of days a student is absent in 2018-2019 school year was 8.5 days. We believe the mean has changed. All right, so the parameter of interest that we're talking about here is the true mean, and it is number of days a student is absent. Number of days a student is absent. All right, so now we have defined our parameter. The next thing we want to do is we want to state our two hypotheses. So our null hypothesis, or our ho, is always going to be that the mean is equal to some value. So we look back up here, and there it is right there. We were told it was 8.5 days in the 2018-2019 school year. Now we want to test to see, has it changed? So changed could mean it increased or decreased. So we say not equal to 8.5, and there is our alternative hypothesis. Now, if you want to include units here, you can. Like, you could call these days. You could go over here and you could call these pounds. But it's not necessary. All right, so next up, after we write our hypotheses and we define our parameter, we're going to check the conditions for our test. The first condition that we need is we need to have a random sample. And we've got to have a random sample in order to have unbiased data. If we have biased data, nothing we do in our test is going to matter. So we have to make sure that everything we get comes from a random sample. So the way we're going to check this is we're just going to write, just like we did before, random sample with a check mark or random sample stated. All right, our next condition, just like it was before, is is there an approximately normal sampling distribution? So we're going to want to use normal CDF to find our p-value just like before. So we need a normal sampling distribution. Now, when we're working with means, it's very different. Proportions, we always use the same condition, the n times p and the n times 1 minus p. With means, there could be three different things we have. So either our data could come from a population that is normal, or we could just have a sample size greater than or equal to 30, and then the central limit theorem kicks in and gives us a normal sampling distribution. Or if we don't have either one of those met, we can actually look at the graph and as long as the graph doesn't have any outliers and is not strongly skewed, then that condition can work. All right. For this class, most of the time, I'm going to stick with the n greater than or equal to 30 case. So we'll just write n is greater than or equal to 30, CLT, normal, check. Okay? And for the last condition, it's just like before, independence. We have to have independent samples from the population. Otherwise, we can't use our standard deviation formula. So we do 10 times our sample size, and we want to say that that is less than. That was a big issue before. Some people use greater than. Less than the population size. All right, we want smaller than a certain amount. All right, so let's check our conditions for both of these. 
So it's the same examples before. The mean weight of high school football players in 2010 was 185 pounds. We believe the mean has increased. So we take a random sample of 100 high school football players and find they have a mean weight of 190 pounds. So we already did our parameter and we already stated our hypotheses. So now we're checking conditions. So first we have a random sample. Check, it says random sample right there. I guess we can number this one. Next up for normal, we look at our sample size and we have a sample of 100. So N is 100, which is definitely greater than or equal to 30. So this central limit theorem gives us that this is a normal sampling distribution. And option number three here, independence. So 10 times our sample size, which in this case is 100, is 1,000. And we want that to be less than our population. So for our population, we take this number here, this 100, and we just change it to the word all. So instead of 100 high school football players, this is all high school football players. And I have a feeling there are probably more than 1,000 high school football players out there in the country. So we're good to go there. All right, next example. So same example we had before. So the mean number of days a student is absent in the 2018-2019 school year was 8.5 days. We believe the mean has changed. So we take a sample of 60 students and find that they have a mean of 9.3 days absent. Hmm, I missed something here. I left out a word. So we need to have random in here. Random sample. I'll probably add that back in in our notes. So random sample, I added it in, we're good to go. Random sample, check. Option number two, we took a sample of 60. So our sample size is 60. That is greater than or equal to 30. So the central limit theorem gives us that this is a normal sampling distribution. And option number three, independence. 10 times our sample size of 60 equals 600. And hopefully that is less than, let's see, 60 students. So this would be all students at probably a particular high school, but we'll just go with all students. So that looks like that checks out. Next up, so this is the full process now. So we're gonna state the parameter, define the parameter, state the hypothesis, write down any statistics or data we have, and then check the conditions. All right, so in 2014, the mean price of a gallon of gas in California was $3.80 with a standard deviation of 0 0.39 or 39 cents. To see if the mean gas price has increased significantly, we take a random sample of 40 gas prices and find they have a mean of $4.25. Is there significant evidence of an increase in gas prices from 2014? So what we're talking about here, we're working with a mean, and is the mean price, so the true mean price of a gallon of, oops, of gas in California. Next, we state our hypotheses, our ho and our ha. So the null hypothesis is always going to be equal to. So we think the mean is equal to what it was before, which was $3.80. So we'll just put 3.8 or 3.80. If you want to put dollars in there, that's fine. All right. Our alternative hypothesis, well, we see the word increase here, and we see the word increase again here. So increase means it's greater than now the $3.80. So there's our hypotheses. Now they give us a lot of other information here. So they give us a standard deviation. So that was the standard deviation back then of 0 0.39. They give us a sample size of 40. And they give us a mean now, which will be our sample mean. So X bar of 4.2. Two five. All right. And I think that's all they give us. So now we go over here and we check our conditions. So our first condition is, do we have a random sample? And sure enough, it looks like we do. It says it right there, random sample. So that checks out. 
option two. So first we look at our sample size. It is 40. 40 is greater than 30. So by the central limit theorem, we get that we're going to have a normal sampling distribution. And condition number three, independence. So 10 times our sample size, which is 40, gives us 400. And now, and this was 40 gas prices they find. So this is from gas stations. So this would be less than all gas stations in specifically California. You know, I think that's probably a good bet that there's more than 400 gas stations in California. So there's all of our conditions checked, our mean defined, what it stands for, our hypotheses stated. We wrote down any of our statistics we've got. If we want to also take note of an alpha value when we do the test, we can just use an alpha value of 0 0.05, just like we used all before for our test. That's kind of the industry standard there, and we could write that down in that box. And that's it. So in the next video, uh, we're going to come back and we're going to go over how to find the p-value. But for now, we just need to state what our hypotheses are, define our parameter, and check our conditions. And it looks like we've got all those things done. So good job. Get started on the assignment, please.